Hey guys, welcome back. Again, there's some construction going on outside, so please excuse the noise. But I did want to show you guys how to do the Gista Virtual Line Capsule Refill Kit that I got for the holidays. And if you don't know what I got for the holidays, check out my last video on what I got for Christmas. If I can find out how to technologically do that, I will put it somewhere on the screen. Maybe it'll be a recommended thing at the end of this um, on the end show screen but let's let's get into refilling some nespresso capsules now i will say i have tried doing this a couple days ago with the regular coffee grounds that are ground from the store in the in the eight ounce capsule that i have and cleaned out however i will say that it didn't turn out the way i wanted it and that it was a little bit too light so i think that store ground coffee is like okay to use for your eight ounce pods but i do think that it needs to be ground just a little bit lighter so it can really get like a concentrated brew i did get some espresso ground coffee um from starbucks so i went to starbucks i picked out a coffee that i enjoy i actually really like this coffee that they have the one from guatemala casa cielo it is really good coffee it has great notes i like the cocoa notes in it so I asked them to grind it in like a really fine espresso grind because it was in a whole bean. And of course I don't have a coffee grinder. So I did go and ask them to grind it and now I have it. So that way I can show you guys the espresso version of the virtual refill uh, capsule kit. Um, I will say again, like I'm sure you could use, you know, regular store-bought grounds for the eight ounce pod, but definitely not for like the espresso capsules. I think that they're a little bit too coarse for the espresso pods. So take that as you will. I think it was just really easy to go get a whole bean and ask them to grind it from a local coffee shop or even like Whole Foods if you like any of their coffee brands there. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, y'all, so the first and foremost thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna get a Nespresso capsule. So one that you've already used before that you're okay cleaning out at the end. So see, this is just an example. This was in the back of my Virtua machine where it collects. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna get like a utility knife or a sharp knife. You're gonna cut around the edges of the hole and then you're gonna like scrape out the coffee beans uh, that have already been brewed and all that other stuff. And after you wash it and you make sure to get as much of the metal around the sides afterwards, you're gonna be left with something like this. Um, it's gonna be a clean, empty capsule that you can then put coffee grounds in and put the tin um, foils on top of, so something like this. So again, I kind of explained it in my last video, but what came with my kit? It's gonna be these tin um, covers that came with the kit. I think there's 80 of them. Um, I kind of threw away the packaging, so we'll, we'll excuse that if that's wrong. But then it also came with a brush to clean around the edges and this little like contraption where you put your pod inside of it. And once you fill it with the grounds using the scoop that they gave you, you're gonna put this on top. Uh, sorry, you're gonna put this tin on top of there and then you're gonna like make sure that it's secure and tightened and then you're gonna be able to do it but let's 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 actually go through this for y'all okay so first i'm gonna put it on here i've already cleaned this capsule this is a double espresso shot then i'm gonna get these coffee grounds right okay you guys probably can't see it right now but i'm gonna shift and scoop and I find with the espresso grounds, this is gonna be like, a full thing of this is gonna be a lot more than what the capsule can take. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so then I'm gonna fill this. And as you can see, this is a really like, small ground. This is not one that's like, you know, really coarse ground. That's what they want. That's how you're gonna get a really nice like crema on top of your espresso and extract it really well. So I kind of am patting it down to make sure that everything is like compact in there. You wanna have a really nice puck almost, like almost as if you're manual espresso making, if that makes sense. When you dump out this pod, you're gonna to need to have a really nice puck that comes out very compactly and doesn't just mush up everywhere and become like soggy grounds type of thing at the end of it. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit more ground to this. I want it to be basically full to the brim. 
actually maybe it will i know i tried this one other time and it actually turned out really good with this double espresso pod but i feel like i'm using more grounds this time maybe i'm just maybe i'm just high but let's see okay that looks really good so again i'm going to compact it until it probably gets around to the point where it's like kind of even on all sides and with a regular espresso machine like a manual one this would kind of be like tamping i guess you could say i don't think that's entirely the equivalent but you guys get the point got some oh got some coffee on me woof okay so then i'm gonna kind of like brush the sides make sure that i can get any extra coffee this part i'm like kind of unsure how to do because i'm just like kind of scraping them off into the ground sometimes i put them back in depending on how much is in there but i don't want to ruin the compactness so i'm just gonna like toss them i highly recommend getting like a paper towel or like a napkin or something under this because this is definitely not a clean process uh, much like a manual espresso machine like coffee grounds are going to get everywhere um and it's 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 gonna be it's all part of the process it's all part of your daily coffee making it's actually kind of nice so i'm gonna like tap it down with my fingers a little bit you know really involved tap okay so as you can see like that's pretty good okay that's pretty good so it looks just like the inside of an espresso capsule that's basically what it's supposed to look like and then now i'm gonna get these little yeasta tin tops i don't really know what they're called i'm gonna be honest with you so the important thing about this is that you're going to want to put it as evenly as possible all around the pod, which is kind of the hard part. I feel like I definitely put this evenly. So just lining it up with the capsule is going to be like the hardest part of this whole venture. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so I tried to get it as evenly as possible all around the capsule. I'm gonna kind of run my fingers around the edges to make sure it's tight. And then to make sure it's as tight as possible, I'm gonna put this little contraption on top. And again, just kind of apply a slight pressure all around. Oh, and it kind of stuck to it. So there you go. You see, it, it's basically, I mean, come on, like, Look at this. It's basically the same concept. The only thing that's kind of like not ideal about using these is that when you're done, of course, you might want to keep the capsule underneath. And I will say this tin foil stuff does stick if you do it right, I'm going to say. It sticks to the pod. So you kind of, and the pod gets very hot after it brews. So um, either wait for it to cool down or like just kind of make sure you don't burn yourself take off the tin like you basically have to take it off almost like a sticker and put it in the trash dump out your grounds and then you can clean this all over again and use the same thing and we'll see what i'm talking about but i have seen some youtube contenters that end up um their their tin like their top part completely just comes undone in the brewing process and i think that's what happens when it's not on securely so make sure you run your finger around it try to get as evenly as possible and then make sure you do this on top of it when it's in that contraption whoops on that contraption so that it's as tight as possible and doesn't get like come off or unstick in the brew because it does get really hot up in there. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to brew some coffee. <laughs> but that looks like some pretty darn good looking espresso, okay? I have noticed that the pot, like the, the, the pot itself and the coffee is just a little bit hotter than what I'm used to with getting an espresso pot and putting it in the machine. But I will say, I think partly has to do with the fact that, you know, Nespresso pods and the way that they're tinned, um, you know, and the way that they're compacted in there might have a lot to do with the temperature that it gets at the end of it. But I think it's it's pretty darn good. And this, I mean, I'm gonna taste it. Oh my god, 
So that's really good. Like, that's amazing. I think that that is the exact same quality that you would get at like a Starbucks coffee shop. You know, and, and this coffee is supposed to be a medium roast, so it, it's right up in there, and it just, it tastes good, it tastes fresh, and I have no complaints about it. I think this is a good alternative for somebody that doesn't really have the money nor the time, or maybe there's not an espresso store near you and you don't feel like ordering them online because, lol, your packages get stolen, like me. I think this is a great alternative to um, buying espresso pods, and I think it's a cheaper alternative in the long run. It might not seem like that at first because, you know, you have to keep, let's say, buying the tin foils on top for refills or buying your coffee ground. But a one coffee bag is definitely going to go farther than, let's say, 10 of these pods in one sleeve. So, yeah. But as you can see, like, this looks exactly like, you know, a punctured Nespresso pod after you get done brewing it. I will say, like, it is definitely a little bit hotter. I did let it cool down a little bit. But you see how it's kind of, like, coming off kind of like a sticker? And then it looks like that. And this is kind of what the regular Nespresso pods look like when I cleaned it out. So you can clean this out and then reuse it. Okay, so I just made a shaken espresso using some of the syrups I got last night. If you don't follow me on TikTok, I did get a few syrups, more than a few, um, from the Tarani website because they were having a sugar-free syrup sale. And I was really excited to try some of the trending syrups that they have on TikTok and YouTube. Um, one of the ones that I got was the salted egg yolk syrup, which is exactly what I put in here along with some caramel. So it looks just like a regular latte or shaken espresso. So I'm really excited to try it. Y'all, that tastes so good. Oh my God. That tastes so good. Y'all, I can't, I really recommend this kit. I think it's a great idea. I think whoever did this should probably get a Nobel Prize for people to save money because I think it's it's a good deal. And that way, like, I know, maybe, not, maybe it's just me. I love the Nespresso brand. I absolutely do. I think I love their pods. I love being able to try different types of coffee all the time, which is one of the big appeal of getting these pods from them because I can try different ones and find out what I like. Um, and sometimes like I want to be able to do that with other companies. Like I want to be able to try like the trade subscription service where they send you like a new coffee from different local roasters around the United States or around different countries. And I just want to be able to try that. And I was kind of feeling left out like, man, I wish I could have a manual espresso machine so that I can try that and have the best of both worlds, like the Nespresso pods and that. But now that I'm able to like get it ground for me, maybe somewhere else, or even get a coffee grinder later on, I can enjoy all the coffees that I really wanted to enjoy using my Nespresso machine. And y'all already know, I love my Nespresso machines. They changed my life. So I think this is a happy medium for me right now. Like, I, you know, I live in an apartment. I don't have a lot of space. Having two coffee machines is quite a bit for me um, because, you know, just I don't have a lot of space and I don't, I can't really expand my coffee bar that much, to be quite frank. So I'm excited to you know, maybe even have a bigger apartment in the future where I can get a manual espresso machine. But for right now, this is, this is a happy medium and I'm so excited. So highly recommend it. Go out and get one. I'll link it again in my description below. And of course, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on TikTok where you can find a bunch of recipes just like this, or you can even see the syrup haul that I posted about all the syrups I just bought from Tarani. And if you yourself want to get some more syrups, dabble in some more syrups because I can't get enough of them obviously it, it's a problem but i just became a member of the jordan skinny syrup squad which is an affiliate program that allows me to have a code so that you guys can use it and get some discount on syrups so if you use lily 10 it'll be in the description show notes whatever below you guys can get um a certain percent off your first order i forget what it was but i'll put it down in the description below all the details so definitely go and do that i love jordan skinny syrups I think it's a great sugar-free brand. I think Tarani has some great sugar-free syrups. I do think that some of Tarani's sugar-free syrups aren't my favorite, and some of Jordan's skinny syrups aren't my favorite. So if you want any recommendations going forward, please let me know in the comments, and I'll definitely tell you some of my top favorites. I think I will also have a video on my favorite syrups of 2022 in the next couple of weeks, so just keep an eye out for that. But happy sipping, y'all, and I hope you can have a fantastic week. Bye, guys. Thank you.